here is an interesting story, and the one that caused, caught my eye, and whilst it might not directly impact my life now, it's interesting. And there's got to be an answer, or I'm sure the answer to the questions that this story raises will be interesting. The percentage of domestic university students who are men has reached an all-time low of 39%, and that is apparently worrying universities. The figure is down from 42% when it was last measured in 2016, and is lower than the United Kingdom and Australia, where 43 to 44% of university students are men. Um, that figure is a head count, meaning part-time students count as one student, but moving to full-time equivalents makes little difference. Men were still 40% of the domestic student role on a full-time basis last year. So what on earth is going on? Why are blokes not wanting to walk or, or learn in the hallowed halls? We're joined now by the CEO of Universities New Zealand, uh, Chris Whelan. Uh, Chris, welcome to the program. Lovely to have you with us. Thanks. Good to be here. All right. This is interesting. This story, as I said, it piqued my interest. That is disproportionate, given that we've got about a 50-50 population um, split in this country between gender population splits, uh, split. So the blokes are not signing up for the BA. Is this happening elsewhere in the world? And do you have any idea what's going on, Chris? Look, it's um, it's certainly something that we are keeping an eye on. It's a, it is a concern. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're seeing the same trend internationally, uh, where men are decreasingly uh, getting a higher education and are becoming more affected by things like um, changes in technology and cyclical uh, shifts in the economy. So, what we're seeing at the moment is a couple of factors coming together. Uh, so, fewer. Um, boys at school getting university entrance, so only about 45% um, versus 58% of women. Uh, so some of the doors are being closed off at school, but then we've also been dealing with uh, very uh, low levels of unemployment. So there's, there's, you know, effectively it's very easy to leave school and walk into a job without necessarily understanding what you might be trading off. So you are if you're going into an unskilled or a semi-skilled job, you're much more vulnerable to cyclical downturns, you're much more likely to end up unexpectedly unemployed, uh, and your lifetime earnings are going to be significantly lower, about $1.5 million lower than if you actually take the time to get some, you know, three years of post-school training or education, whether it's as a plumber or an accountant. Uh, they, both have great, they both have great lifetime outcomes. The worst thing you can do is not get something post-school. Yeah, I, I hear you absolutely. And I, interesting, I hadn't thought about the um, low unemployment situation changing the, the the choices or altering the choices people make. But of course, when I think about it, it would. Could I ask you yeah, just um, just going back a step though? Does it matter what gender our university students are? Surely we can be gender blind and say how many graduates are we putting through? How many people overall are going to university? Why does it matter a toss if there are any Zoraudis? Well, the big thing that's really changed in New Zealand, and it's the same thing that's changed in every other developed country, is the nature of the workforce. So um, in 1996, seems like a long time ago, but it's a census year, exactly a third of New Zealand jobs were kind of what you'd call knowledge worker jobs, uh, jobs where you would really benefit from a degree or something like that. Um, 25 years later, it's now two-thirds of all jobs in the New Zealand economy. Wow. So turning that around, where two-thirds of the jobs were unskilled or semi-skilled um, in 1996, now it's just one-third, and that's a continuing trend. If you're not getting that post-school training or education, as I say, trades or, or you know, higher education, um, you really are closing off a lot of your options, and those options are diminishing. Yeah. Oh, look, I just want to clarify, actually, by way of these stats, are we talking here about all tertiary education or just universities? Uh, we're talking all tertiary education. Okay, so all right. Can, of course, so get... this would be going to a polytech and getting a an engineering uh, qualification or a mechanics qualification. That's also dropping in terms of men or, or, or the numbers are, are down. No, we, we, or rather we're, we're seeing um, more men in trades uh, versus women. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, you know, we're seeing, uh, for example, a lot more, um, say, women as teachers, uh, men being crowded out of that. Um, you know, you know, we're seeing we're seeing um, 
you know, we're seeing slow sort of demographic trends over time. Uh, and you know, the worry is, of course, just simply that because employment rates are so good at the moment and it's so easy to walk into a job, you know, it's pretty easy to make that choice around, oh, let's, let's give up, you know, two or three years, rather than taking two or three years to get, you know, that higher more mm. training or more education, you know, going straight into a job and then finding yourself trapped 10 or 15 years into your life, your working life, uh, going, mm, why didn't I get that training? Yeah. Um, I wonder also, Chris, if to be honest, in the woke world in which we live, blokes don't particularly like the atmosphere that is created in tertiary institutions, an attitude of uh, of political correctness and having to walk around on eggshells in case you offend some snowflake. Hard to hard to really answer that, but uh, ironically, there's just been an interesting uh, UK study done uh, where they've actually tried to break down actually, uh, you know, what is it? What are the factors? You know, are universities effectively um, um, turning people into liberals or something like that? And what they're actually finding is actually there's a long-term trend in society. Uh, far more likely, if you have that kind of liberal uh, uh, attitude, that you're more likely to want to go to university. Um, but you know, ultimately, you know, the, the big issue is just simply making sure that, you know, you get an education and it shouldn't be... Factored yeah, that a, wasn't a no, a, Chris, to be honest, that maybe our, our super woke tertiary institutions are not simply wel welcoming to men or to the male psyche. I, I think, you know, there's a generalisation there. I think those institutions have always had a clash of ideologies and have actually encouraged that young people to test and debate ideas. I mean, you know, when I was at university, which is a bit of a lifetime ago, you know, you still had the the um, young liberals and the, the conservatives and such on campus you know, facing off regularly, and it was healthy. And a lot and of people would say, now happened. you've just got Me Too and cancel culture. Look, it's something, and you know, and I, you know, I think back to when I again I was at university, which is in the 1980s. Now, you had you know a whole range of similar conversations around women's rights, and you needed to be able to have the extremes and the moderates and the, you know, the, the counters basically having those debates to basically move your society, you know, forward or sideways. <laughs> All right, is this a problem? And I'm going to say interesting story. Is it a problem that your organisations and tertiary education providers need to fix or need to start thinking about? Look, it's something we're conscious about. Anything which is seeing um, pathways closed off to everyone with ability being able to get to, say, university is something that we're worried about. So anything which, you know, at university entrance level where we're seeing significantly fewer men getting university entrance and having the door closed to them, you know, it's not going to be that they're less bright or anything like that. There's just something that means that there's different aspiration or different support to get them through. That worries us. And so, yeah, you know, we, we want to work back with the compulsory sector to make sure that everyone with ability, you know, basically keeps as many doors open as possible for as long as possible. And the other way to address is, of course, if we could just be a little more discouraging to women about going to university. No, 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 I don't think that's the answer at all. At the end of the day, everyone with ability should be able to basically fulfil their ability. All right. Chris, I thank you so much. And as I said, I'm going to keep an eye on the story. I find it fascinating and interesting. I thank you uh, for joining us and discussing it this morning. That is Chris Whelan. He is the CEO of Universities New Zealand. So, blokes, why do you think blokes might not be going to the varsity? Too worried about having being me too or having to mind your P's and Q's.